if you can remember, there was a gentleman who came from Europe, from oh, England, I yeah. think, and uh, was trying to organize CPP. Yes. He was shot and killed around um, um, uh, uh, Ofanko. Ofanko. Yeah, yes. I heard something about yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, he was president. I was the national secretary. But I was doing the, mo the mobilization. I was like Nkrumah. He was president, gentle dealing with a champion and so on. I never got ne close to them. I was mobilizing the students. Mm -hmm. I could just get up and go to Cape Coast and from there to Legon. And the next day there will be there will be a looter all over the place. So we did that anyway. And then finally in the seventy seven I completed the I tried to rewind and get at least second class upper in there. But I meant to get first class, but it didn't work. Last minute I was taken ill, mm. and so it disrupted the program. I managed the second lower, and then I left. Yeah. Now, mechanical engineering. Chemical engineering. Something significant happened. All the same, because the teachers and the head of the department were convinced that it is the extracurricular matters that made me not make it to the first class grade or second upper grade. They still wanted me to continue. So I was put down to go to France to, uh, to uh, do a course in petroleum, in, in petroleum te uh, economy, uh. petroleum economics. I wouldn't have been here. I would have been in Saudi Arabia and those Gulf places. Now what happened? I did national service at uh, a paint company, yeah. paint division of Gihok. Yeah. at that time, Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, which was later wound up by Rawlings. And then uh, when I finished, I was employed by Gihok. I was uh, Gihok, but posted to Aboso Glass Factory. Yeah. Yeah, where there is a factory for making bottles and, and so on. But the Aboso, fact, is it the one in Kumasi, around Kumasi? Aboso Glass for Western Region. Okay. All right. In Hune Valley area there. Yeah. Uh, Pristia, I mean, Takwa. Also. The factory was defunct. So, and then that coincided with all these problems with uh, June 4th and all those things. And so, uh, it, life was be a very difficult. But I was there all right. Mm. With, if I took my dam, that time we had only uh, two children my daughter and then the one who is a lawyer too, like me. So we, we were there uh, when I had a telegram. At that time, we, we communicated by telegram or letter. If we wanted something fast, telegram. Mm. It may take two days to come. So I had a telegram that I should report at the French embassy to complete departure arrangements to go for France to, to start the course. So I took, t that time we had a, a train service called Sleeper. You just enter the, buy a ticket, jump into the train at Takwa. And you have a bed, you can have a meal, there will be tea for you and so on. And you sleep comfortably. By dawn, you wake up in Accra and you go and brush yourself and you are fine, to, good to go. Hmm. So I took the sleeper and got to Accra, went and spruced myself up somewhere and got to French embassy. Nobody was prepared to talk with me. Why? They, something had happened. Something had happened. So uh, I realized I was at the reception. Somebody would come and they would be talking to each other, then go and come. Then one young man came and told me that, well, Mr. Debugre, it is not our fault. You may have to go to the university and see the head of department because your scholarship has been t given to somebody else. You know, there were, there, there, there were three of us going. I was the only northern person. The two were Fantis. And then the French, uh, our um, embassy in France there, mm. his, uh, the, I think the charge the fair or something. His son was also interested in the scholarship. And he was Fanti also. And you took this northern guy's scholarship and added to a Fanti man. So they had some three fantasies went. So the French people told me that, unfortunately, that's what happened. 
So I should go to this. And I said to go and see him for what? There's no point. There's no point. He is the one who recommended me, and the French uh, people accepted and, uh, and admitted me. Now he has, behind me, you know, given give the, the scholarship to his, to, to his uh, countryman, his, his tribesman, and left me. So it's okay. That week was the week Rawlings was preparing to hand over to Liman. Mm. And uh, all these, our MPs who had been elected at that time, were, had been sent to uh, Legon for orientation, you know. And in any case, Avoca and others were still in Legon. They are not finished yet? No. He, law, the law, the law course is long. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so he, I finished 77, they finished in 78. He and uh, Martin Amidu. Mm. Uh, Joe Abanga finished in 80. May he rest in peace. Mm. So I went to Legon, to Avoca and others, and told them the story. Say, so, okay, we'll take it like that. So that is the first day I met Rawlings, physically like this. Because as former NUCS uh, secretary. secretary and uh, an activist, there was an International Students' Union conference at the State House, which is now Parliament House. Mm. And uh, Rawlings was to come there in, in his capacity of head of state to open the conference. So he came there and opened it, and as a former NUC secretary, I was invited to be part of the leadership to go and usher him in and out. So when we finished, he finished, he was walking to his armored cars and so on. We were the leaders following him there. So he started saying that he had made some statement that during his speech, mm. that he doesn't care about capitalism and socialism and so on. Those are things that don't concern him. That, uh, you know, he is, he is talking about hunger. Mm. If there's your, you are hungry, this, this, this. So I tried to challenge him on that. That, that. that your speech you made and this your thing about capitalism and socialism and hunger and so on. They are related. Whether you, are, you have capitalist viewpoint or you have a socialist viewpoint will determine how you will you know, your attitude towards solving that hunger problem you are talking about. Who is uh, we are, we are, uh, we are just going about always socialism, capitalism, ism. <laughs> then he said, if we, we say we are socialists, we don't like capitalism, he reached from our glasses, nearly broke them. If you are not, you don't want capitalism, why are you wearing capitalist things? And I seized my glasses back and jumped aside. You know, that's how I met him the first time. Then, anyway, I went back to um, Aboso. Then things started deteriorating, deteriorating economically and so on. Eventually, we had an advert from Kuma, uh, Nigeria. Oh. They wanted uh, teachers, especially science teachers. So they came and recruited us and took us by air to, uh, Nigeria. to Nigeria. I was sent to... In fact, it was that uh, state that was recruiting, uh, Cross River State. The capital was Calabar. Mm. That's where they sent Charles Taylor when he, they took him away from uh, uh, Liberia. So I was there when the school took place. I'd come in September to take Madame and the children there. And then uh, Chris Atim, you have heard of him. Mm. Chris Atim was the uh, ideological moving spirit of the PNDC. And he was two years behind me. He was two years behind me in uh, Navongo School. Yeah. And in fact, it was, it was he and I who were editors of some student magazines that led to these things that the and leadership... Navrongo. It appears most of the big guys actually went to Navrongo. Yes. By PNDC time, Navrongo, was, Navrongo School was in full control of the country. Oh. Yes. So... Chris, I went to meet Chris at Tim when I came in September 1981 to say hello to him. He was, he had, he was doing national service with the architectural and engineering services. He did a uh, quantity survey, survey. He's a quantity surveyor. So then he suggested to me that uh, he would take me for us to go and visit Rawlings. That was the time they were planning to overthrow Liman. 
So, and my brother-in-law too was a member of parliament for Zebila here. Uh, Madam's brother mm. was a member of parliament, uh, Professor Agbangu. So, I said, all right, let's go. So, we, we took a taxi to Rollins House, Independence. There's an independence, from, uh, what, uh, there's, there's straight road from Makola to Legon, where the French embassy is. There are some high-rise buildings. We, we, they have now remodeled them, uh, where the BNI headquarters is, and then the Mormon church and so on, to, to that area. He was living around there, in one of these colonial buildings. So we got there, and uh, Zayebo and others all were on the ground floor. Okay. Every morning they would gather there and they were... So he was lying on his bed upstairs. So, and Chris was, the man, if you didn't see Chris at him, you wouldn't see him. Probably. So he went straight with me to the bedroom. And he sat down and then he said, okay, Chris introduced me. I was a student leader and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I'm now in Nigeria, but uh, the way things are, he decided to bring me so that we would talk. You know, After you have done how many years in Nigeria? Oh, just, uh, I went to Nigeria in 80, the same 81. Mm -hmm. I went in April or so, or March, and then I came in September to take the... No, I went in 80, mm -hmm. 1980, so I had done one year. So, he said he will not talk to me, he will not talk because he didn't know me, and that Chris to talk. He asked first what, what we would drink, and I said I would drink beer. He went and brought this short beer, mm -hmm. this uh, club mini. And then he and Chris mixed some coffee. So he was lying on his bed, I must say miserably. So I, uh, Chris started telling me that, uh, you know, the situation was such that there will be some, there, something has to move because uh, the conditions were ripe for uh, revolution and so on. So I, I, after he finished, I said, no, Chris, I'm, I'm of a different opinion. I've, I've been around for about two weeks at least. I've